Welcome back to Make It Plain Podcast. We're excited that you are here today. This is our first episode for 2024. And last year we had a great year. We had a lot of topics lined up and I'm sure you learned a lot and as well, we had fun. So of course we have back again this year, Andrew and Richard, welcome back. It's good to be back in the you, studio. You know, anytime you address the, the false teachings of spiritualism, mm -hmm. the devil always shows up, yep. but nevertheless, victory is ours. That's right. Let's get it right. That's right. So those of you who are here, you can look at this program on YouTube, of course, share it, like it, comment down below, especially on this subject. We're going to tell you that in a moment. Um, and if you are listening via our other platforms, continue to do so. That would be Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. All the links are in the description below. Today, we are talking about a very intriguing and trending topic. It is The Book of Clarence. This is a movie that is out today, January 12th, 2024. Right. It is a movie that is produced by Jay-Z. And also, it is directed by James Samuel. So without further ado, we're going to play a short piece of the trailer. You can watch the full thing on YouTube just to give you a glimpse of what this is about. But just so you know, when the first trailers were released last year, it was already causing a storm on social media. People saying, this is blasphemy. This is wrong. Let's listen. I'm Clarence. Where I'm from, you fight to survive. <laughs> I'm not a bad person. Just playing the cards I was dealt. Mom, one day I'm gonna get you out of here. I have a plan. What are we doing here? Jesus lives there. I want to be like that in 10 years. I want to be like that now. I need to figure out what inspires him. I can just replicate what he does. Imagine the money people will give us. Hallelujah. Holy shit, I get high as Buddha. Put you on that highway to heaven like I'm your Uber. Oh, dead one, open your eyes. Elijah. Oh! All right, so that is a part of the trailer. And I'm just going to read what it's about really quickly. It says, streetwise, but down on his luck, Clarence, that's the main character. He is struggling to find a better life for his family while fighting to free himself of debt. Captivated by the power and glory of the rising Messiah and his apostles, he risks everything to carve his own path to a divine life and ultimately discovers that the redemptive power of belief may be his only way out. So long story short, he is a imitator of Jesus in the sense that he's fabricating miracles because he wants the fame, the power, and the glory. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to move right along. We're going to play a clip from James Samuel, the director of this film, as he went on the Breakfast Breakfast Club to promote it and listen to how he greets Charlemagne the God and DJ Envy. Here it is. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. One of my favorite people. He don't even know it, though. James my Samuel. Brother. My brother. Peace <laughs> to the gods. Peace to the gods. Peace, black man. How are you? I'm good, King. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It's... it's it's about time, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Happy to have you, man. You got a new movie out called The Book of Clarence. But before... So there it is. He comes in. This is the director. And he says what? What does he say? Peace to the gods. Peace to the gods. Very interesting choice of words for a greeting. And of course, I, I kind of I looked this up. And in the, in the Urban Dictionary, it means greeting someone while displaying ultimate respect to them. The words, peace to the gods, peace to the gods. I don't even know if he fully understands or comprehends what he's actually saying. Mm -hmm. But so, contextually, contextually, correct. Yep. he's calling them gods. 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 Yeah. And, and that's what we want to highlight as we talk about this film a little bit because we haven't watched it. It's out today. But notice in the next clip, as Charlemagne watched it and DJ Envy watched it, what was their takeaway from watching the film? Classic. Like, yeah, it, it's a fantastic movie and it's going to be a discussion piece regardless. What you just said about Matthew 24, 5. five yeah. That was the debate me and my wife was having this weekend, and that was the debate we were actually having this, this, this morning. morning. It's like, who exactly was Jesus in the film? You know, and, and maybe this is just me being... Why your face look like that? He don't look like yeah, he don't want to tell us. We maybe, were arguing this morning yeah, about but it. Maybe I'm just being a little fake deep. What I took from it was everybody's God. We should recognize everybody as God, but the most important thing is recognizing God in yourself. Mm. Uh, uh, so he, he mentioned two things there, Charlemagne the God, saying that the movie... It wasn't even clear who Jesus was. Now, we know this is not a, a true historical account of Christ. It's a comedy, all kinds of stuff, Parody, yeah. um, misconstruing the real story Satire, of Christ. Correct, Satire. Correct. 
Um, but then he also says, look, my takeaway is everyone is God. Discover the God inside of you. Correct. Right. That's the mm -hmm. most important thing. So it connects with his greetings. Yes. Correct. Peace right. to the God. And he mentioned Matthew 24 and verse 5. Yeah. And we know what that says. Yeah. In the last days. There shall be many false, false Christ. Christs. That's what come in my name. And they shall deceive many. many. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And very, it's very interesting. The movie is about Christ, Christ in you, or right. you are God, you are Christ, right. That's right. you are a Messiah. Yeah. These are signs of the last days. And later on, mm -hmm. in this Make It Plain presentation, we're going to uncover the fact that Satan's deception, spiritualism, mm -hmm. is not only for one race, uh -uh. not only for one class, it covers the whole spectrum of humanity. That's right. Yep. And his deceptions come in various forms. Mm -hmm. And that is where we're heading for, mi for make the it Make It Plain you just, at this midday yeah, hour. You just stay tuned, friends. Now, now let's, let's, let's pose that, poll. that first poll question. Mm -hmm. Let's do that here. And then we're going to roll a few more clips yep. and then come back and address a few important scriptures, the poll. All right, right, friends. We just have the poll in the, in, the, um, in the chat there. So go ahead and take the poll. Don't put the answers in the chat. Um, and again, the question is, that we want to post to you all is, do you agree that humans are inherently divine? Do you believe that we as humans are born intrinsically, innately with divinity? Put your answer in the chat, yes or no. Do you believe that, friends? And again, we're going we're gonna to discuss this, dive into that very same question from the Word of God. Because again, we can have the right answer, but what's going to happen when someone posts a particular scripture, mm -hmm. which we're going to address shortly, That's right. how... Will we respond? Mm -hmm. How should we respond? Yeah, that's right. Let's take a look at this next clip as James Samuel confirms what Charlemagne's takeaway was from the film. Let's mm -hmm. play it. There is a God in yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's super important, man. Like when we see each other, it's peace to the God. Mm -hmm. It's peace to the God. Like there's a God in yourself. And, that, and that's like the most important thing. Mm, there he is. There's a God in yourself. That's the most important thing. Right. This is not a, a new theory, but he is presenting it. And, and this is the takeaway of the film. So from the director's mouth himself, should that be something that Christians should be watching, trying to search within themselves and find a God? Right. No, sir. No. That, you, know, you know, back in the day, they had a wordless song that says, there is a hero in you. Yeah. If you look within, within yes. your heart. I think that was even a song as well. It might have been something. It, like is a, yeah. it was a song. song. It right? is a song. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're seeing Satan's deceptions show up in songs, mm -hmm. show up in movies, mm -hmm. show up in books. Right. It covers the whole spectrum of society. That's yes. right. Let's, let's not take the... Don't end the poll yet. Yeah, no. let's run through this really yes. quickly. Yeah. So yeah. as we look at the screen, as you're talking about songs, who are the headliners for this soundtrack? Yes, sir. On the screen, you're going to see who it is. Uh -huh. It says, The Book of Clarence soundtrack dominated by Jay-Z, Lil Wayne, and Doja Cat's star power. So here we see a film that has something to do with Jesus. We're not saying it's a, a religious film or it's a true historical account. No. But something to do with Jesus. Uh -huh. And who are the ones on the soundtrack? Lil Wayne, Doja Cat, Jay-Z. Individuals uh -huh. who are known to be a part of the Illuminati, to be known uh, to be a part of spiritualistic and demonic things. Doja Cat, we did a, a podcast on her just last year. Yes, sir. Demons, and look how she was parading herself. What's interesting about that is that even as we saw Jay-Z in the movie, he, he's, a, he's a director, producer, producer. of the actual mm -hmm. film, and Jay-Z was actually interviewed from the Breakfast Club, I'm connecting these two, two dots together, several years ago, and he actually was pressed on what his religion was. Mm. And beating, about, beating around the bush, he said, you know, in, in, uh, I'm trying to find so words many words. Here. in so many words, okay. he says that I am a God. Mm -hmm. That's his religion, Correct. right? And where that comes from is actually Mithraism. Mm -hmm. Mithraism, or the, the God of Myth, the Mithra, or the God of who... who who they call Mithra, was an Iranian god of the sun. And this was the deity in the Roman Empire during the second and third century. And one of the dogmas, one of the central dogmas of Mithraism, friends, notice here, is that you can transform, you can become, you are innately God. You yes. can become God. Mithraism. Yes. So if you see, when you see these celebrities and they have their hands in certain themes of films and music, mm -hmm. Look at their lifestyle and look what they are promoting. Jay-Z, he wears like a big old sun pendant. I'm not sure, sure if you have, have seen some of the pictures he's taken. And this is what these individuals are promoting. So when it comes to this film, 
we can actually see what the central theme is and who the spirit is behind these films. Jesus died for these individuals. Yeah. And we are called not to preach to the choir. Uh -uh. We are called to reach people in these spheres of society. Yeah. If they have right. been poisoned with false doctrine, mm -hmm. we need to understand the truth to be able to explain it as we evangelize, as we meet their needs, as we witness to them. Uh -huh. That's why make it plain is so important. That's, That's right. right. And really quickly, I just want to highlight something. Um, last year, there was an exhibition at the Brooklyn Public Library, and it was called The Book of Hove, where it highlighted the work of Jay-Z, his rise from you know childhood all the way to stardom. And I actually went there. As you can see, I, I have a little uh, booklet that they were giving out there. But look at the screen. Look at the imagery. On the left, that's the outside of it. So you went to spy? I went to spy. Yes. That's it. Yes, it is. And like, like Joshua and Caleb? That's right. All right, all right, brother. We can conquer. We can overcome. And so on the left, you see how the artwork, even on the outside, it's kind of laid out, as it were, scripture, a page of scripture. Um, you can see the things that are inside. Some of them, of course, uh, clothing that he has worn and other memorabilia and original things. But here's the point that we just want to show you. In the book that it tells you himself, it expose says, them, brother. Expose them. He it, went to spy. He's going to expose them that's now. Right. Let's go. That's right. In that's right. this, the book of Hove, uh, there's a section called Hove did that. And it says, he was often called Hove, short for Jehovah, a play on mm. Jehovah, the Hebrew name for God. Hove produced a heavenly body of work while driven by what seemed a divinely directed destiny. Mm. So he's calling himself God. And yet here he is promoting a movie which the director, James Samuel, is saying the same thing. Which That's comes right. out today. Yep. Very, very interesting. So and the know, poll. And, and that ex exhibition, you could say that exhibition was a shrine, a, a altar, a, a, a temple here, here dedicated, dedicated to him, right? The inside, again, I was there. So that's you? That's me with, behind the, the camera. Thing. But you look to the left, you're going to see the, the hands, the triangle, the... Yes, that's, all see, that's the all-seeing eye, believe, Correct. or whatever that Correct. was. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so... Interesting. So, a God in you. God mm -hmm. in you. Let's, yeah. let's end the poll, yep. and all let's right. see where we are. All right, friends, we're going to end the poll right now. Let's see how we all did. So, do you agree? Do you agree that humans are inherently divine? 88% of you all voted no. Humans are not innately, intrinsically divine. Okay. Okay. No. Well, okay. with that in mind, let's take a look at a scripture. Mm -hmm. All right. In 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. Uh -huh. How would you respond if this question was posed to you from the scripture? 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Whereby are given unto us uh -huh. exceeding great and precious promises that by these mm -hmm. you might be partakers yes. of the divine nature. Yes, having. Partakers of the divine nature, mm -hmm. having escaped the corruption that is in the world through wow. lust. Mm -hmm. So this scripture appears to say that we can become part, we mm -hmm. can be recipients mm -hmm. of divinity, Correct. divine nature, mm -hmm. partakers of God's divine nature. Yes. We are gods. Yes. Mm -hmm. How would we respond? Mm -hmm. So we can say the correct answer for the poll question, mm -hmm. but how would we respond to Second Peter chapter one verse four? Yeah, right. that, that's a great question. And you know, as you read the context, it tells you that we can be partakers of the divine nature. We don't have it right now. We're not. We are not innately divine. But as you read it, it's telling you how to do that, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So right now, because of sin, we have a sinful nature. The Bible is clear on that. Uh -huh. And in order to be partakers of this divine nature, we have to align ourselves with Christ, reject sin. He will then give to us his power to overcome sin, live out his life within us, and then perfect us. Um, uh, save us, we'll go to heaven, and he will give us now a divine nature, one that is free from sin, and, and, and you can keep reading. And when, you, when you look at the word partaker, a partaker mm -hmm. is not the same as intrinsically already having something. Right. If you're a partaker, you are now receiving something that you don't already have. Pause right there. That's right. You could see the distinction with what you said and what these men are saying. They believe that they are Born mm -hmm. gods, yes. yeah. born divine. Mm -hmm. Continue, brother. Right. So, I mean, that's the point right there. Correct. You are receiving of Correct. something 
that you don't have. And what are you receiving? Part of God's divine nature, which is his character, which right. is what you just touched on. Right. Which is to say yes to him when tempted That's right. and no to the sinful desire. That's, That's right. right. Four quick scriptures. Second Peter 1 verse 4, which uh -huh. says we can become partakers uh -huh. of God's divine nature yep. so we can escape, overcome uh -huh. the lust of sin. The second scripture is actually 1 John chapter 3 verse nine, right? and verse 9. Yes. It says that those who have the seed of Christ remaining in them uh -huh. will not sin. That's mm -hmm. right. Will not sin because the seed remains in us. We uh -huh. cannot sin uh -huh. because we are born of God. Yeah. Who is that seed? Hold, hold on. What is that seed first? Luke chapter 8, verse 11. The word. The word of Thank God. you. Third scripture, yes. Luke 8, 11. So it's by us meditating upon the word mm -hmm. and claiming those promises of victory right. when tempted. That's how we become partakers that's right. Amen. of that divine power, nature, power mm -hmm. to say yes to him and no to self. Mm -hmm. John 15, verse 5 and verse 7. Yes. If you abide in me, and I in, I, you. I, I, I in you, I in you. Mm -hmm. yeah. you shall bring forth much fruit, yes. abiding. How do we allow Christ to abide in us and we abide in him? Verse 7, if my words, mm -hmm. the seed again, in you. abide in you, yes. then you will get victory over sin. And who is that word? John chapter 1, verse 3. That's Christ. Verse 1 and verse 3. In the beginning was the Word, and that Word was with God, mm -hmm. and with God. Amen. And John 14, it's Christ. Yes. It's through the Word, mm -hmm. accepting it and saying yes to Christ, no to sin, we become partakers yes. of that divine nature because Jesus, when tempted, also said yes to his Father and no, no. to sin. Mm -hmm. We can partake of that experience. Amen. Amen. And that's the hope but we don't have it innately of ourselves now. Amen. Amen. Let's take a look at this other clip from James Samuel, just confirming uh, from his perspective that it doesn't matter what religion you are, you are God. Uh. But whatever your belief is, God is inside you. Right? Whatever your belief is, even if you have no faith, God is inside you. And I want people to take, take that away from this, Absolutely. this movie. Mm -hmm. So what you took away from it for me is a beautiful, is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. That's what he wants you to take away from this movie. No matter what your religion, if you believe in God, if you're atheist, God's inside you. Uh -huh. Is that what the Bible teaches? No. I mean, when you look at Genesis chapter 3, right from the beginning, this is a lie that has been told down through the ages and it's being re-echoed down from Satan through these men. And that's why we are making it plain. Mm -hmm. When you look at Genesis 3 verse 15, this was the very, same, very first lie Satan told. Right, the very first sermon on spiritualism. Right. That ye shall not surely die, but you shall be partakers. You shall be like God, knowing good and evil. After you sin. After, of course, after you <laughs> sin, disobey God yes. and you will become like him. Wow. So in order for us to become like God or be God, we have to disobey mm. God's strict commands. Mm. Right? So notice, so that was the first lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we see that same lie being perpetuated mm -hmm. in these days, when are we living? First days or the last days? Oh, we're in the last days. Or oh, in the last days. Right. And I mean, that, that finds its root right back to Isaiah chapter 14 with Lucifer in mm -hmm. heaven. He wanted to be like God. Oh, yes. He mm. wanted to have the very same nature. They were very, he wanted to be God, right? So, I mean, there you have it right there. That's Don't right. need to digress on that point. And so no, we'll come back to it. That's right. right. So we're seeing this is um, the, the secular individuals who are talking about this, James Samuel, the Book of Clarence, that movie. Not only that, but this idea is among people who profess to be Christians. Let's play a clip from a professed prophet. So, so right here, what we're saying is, it's not just a movie uh -uh. Nope. or a book. Nope. It has permeated society. That's right. So let's play a clip from a so-called prophet and his sermon, Ye Are Gods. Adam was not being created to be a child of God. God was creating Adam as God. No, 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 no. Listen to this. God is trying to produce himself. Okay. So, so when God created Adam, he wasn't trying to make him a child of God. He was producing himself. So what he's teaching is Adam was God. Born God. Born, born God. God. Let's continue. So, so well, since wait, wait, Adam wait, 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 was born wait, wait, wait. God, uh -huh. so Adam's children, descendants are also what? God. Mm. Gods. Mm. Divine. Can, divine now. Can divine. God create God? Hmm. Divine. Let's play the next. Yes, go ahead. Okay, he continues. So God was not trying to create somebody lower than him. This is the reason on the seventh day he rested. 
No, you didn't get it. God is a duplicator. No, he's not. He's a creator. Since God is not a duplicator, when he created Adam, he rested because if he was to work the day he created Adam, it meant two gods were working. Now I'm talking to somebody here. At the back there, I'm speaking to somebody. If you realize it, you will become so powerful. If you realize it, you will become so powerful. Is he in Africa? Yes. You know, so what we're showing here is that this first lie from Satan has permeated continents, mm -hmm. races, and that's where we're going now. But let's get into our second poll question. Because yes. we want safe to serve local say to serve local and international and first time viewers to react engage with this subject matter which is so important mm -hmm. second poll question and all then right. we'll move forward oh yeah yeah all right yeah yes friends i'm prepping it right now it's going to be very important because again you're going to meet individuals around this globe who are going to present to you these error errors mm -hmm. and you will have to meet them from a thus say it the lord correct all right so let's put that poll question correct. in the chat right here so let's so while you're doing that yeah. let someone things we were always focusing on, no. on the book of Clarence and the movie. That would be a lack of yeah. understanding. The first time I actually encountered somebody who told me that I was interviewing back in Florida. We were doing street interviews and I'm trying to discuss with someone a certain subject. I don't remember. Uh, but he said, You're, he said, I'm a God. And that shook me. That was like the first time I ever heard that. I'm a God. He said, you're a God. Uh, so after that, I began to realize that people have various false beliefs, but they also try to derive it from the Bible. And that's why we want to talk about this subject, because you have those in the world, they think they're gods innately, regardless of the Bible. Then there are those who take scriptures of the Bible, misapply them, and say, we're gods. All right, friends. So we have the poll in the chat right now. Go ahead and take that poll. The question is, what does the phrase, ye are gods, what does the phrase, ye are gods, mean that is written in Psalm 82 and verse 6 and John 10 and verse 34. Because they use these scriptures, both John 10 and Psalm 82, to say, to claim that we are gods. Okay? So take the poll in the chat, and we're going to dive into this sure. as we go along here shortly. Yes. Um, before you do that, just, uh, let's see. Okay. All right, continue. Let's play this next clip. Um, and just showing a compilation of other spiritual leaders, so-called, so-called, uh -huh. who believe and teach the same theories. Twist it around and get it to say what you want. You can make the Bible say anything you want it to. When I read in the Bible where he says, I am, I just smile and say, yes, I am too. You tap into who you really are. You know what the Bible calls you? It says you are a little Elohim. You are a little God. Don't you understand? That's what he's saying about us now. Like right now, you're looking at a person who is not just a person. Somehow, God is in me, and there's a sense in which I am like God and man all at once. Very, very strong claims. So, so we can see the fallacy of yes. these teachings. Yes, fallacious. But, very. but what if we, we are confronted with Colossians mm. chapter 1 and verse 27, yes. where it says, Christ in, in you, you. Yes. the hope of glory. Uh -huh. How would you respond? Let's take a look at that. Uh -huh. Because remember, it's one thing to simply address what these men are saying, right? And having the correct response. Uh -huh. But what's going to happen when they present a scripture which appears on the surface to be promoting that we are born gods, we are divine, huh. omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. We have that intrinsically. Mm. How would we respond? Colossians 1.27. Hmm. It says, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, mm -hmm. the hope of glory. So now they would say, there it is. The Messiah is in me. Mm -hmm. I am born God. Uh -huh. Is that what that verse says? That's not mm -hmm. what Christ in you, uh -huh. meaning we're born divine. Uh -uh. Christ in you. If it's Christ in you, he wasn't in you in the beginning. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's, it's an experience that you receive at a particular time. Right. Right. What is the purpose of Christ in you? Look at the next verse. Yep. What is the end result of Christ being in you? That's right. Whom we preach, verse 28, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect 
in Christ Jesus. So, and so that's the experience correct. of having Christ in us, that our characters, that our sins can be overcome and that we can become perfect just like him mm -hmm. who is abiding in us. So, it goes back to 2 Peter chapter 4 and verse 1. Peter, that's the Andrew. point. And mm -hmm. it's the word. Because Christ in you, not literally speaking, mm -hmm. but we're talking about Christ in you through the word, right. mm -hmm. the word, right. yes. yep. the word, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he is the word mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. one sense. And he's also a person mm -hmm. yes. in the second sense. Yes. It makes it the word. Yeah. In the same yeah. book, Colossians 3 and verse number 16, it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. That's this is how we have Christ dwell in us. Yeah. All right. Next clip. Let's All take right, a look. Let's roll. Those in the chat. Those oh. in the chat. Take that poll. Okay. Now this is actually Ken Wilbur. Mm -hmm. This clip. These clips were, we are going to show. Ken Wilbur is called the grandfather. Mm -hmm. I mean, the He's progenitor. The forerunner in modern <laughs> times. Exactly of this teaching that we are born gods. Mm -hmm. I mean, all those people you just saw, the, that woman's name, Paula, 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 Paula White. White. Okay. Paula White, Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Copeland Chan. 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 They're all students <laughs> yes. of Ken Wilbur. Yeah. Now, here's what we are driving home now. This idea that you are born God mm -hmm. does not res re resign itself to just hip hop, R&B, Hollywood, books and, me and, and movies and so on. Mm -hmm. It also resides in yoga, mm. Buddhism. Don't touch the yoga new, now. New age. People love the yoga. Don't touch it. Um, do you know how many storefronts mm. in these plazas you see right now promoting yoga? Mm. Yeah. Make it Classes. Plain. New age. It's, new it's, age. It's, it's, it's a rise, rising religion. And that's why we have to address this. Yeah. So the book of Clarence, the movie just came out today. Mm -hmm. That's trending. So as a result, we're simply compiling. Yeah. Makes sense now different, to bring forth the truth now. That's right. Ken Wilbur. Here different, he is. different ingredients. And friends, we can't share everything he has said, or else we run the risk of actually promoting his thoughts indirectly yeah. to the audience. So we have to be very careful also. Yeah. Let's roll that first clip. Get this out. Ken Wilbur is an American author and philosopher who has written about adult development, developmental psychology, philosophy, and ecology. He has been greatly impacted by and practices Buddhist meditation methods. Wilbur has been categorized as a notable New Ager. Unlike the biblical worldview, the New Age movement teaches that man is inherently divine, that all things are divine, that all is one and all is God. Hmm. One of Wilbur's main... Okay, let's roll to... Don't end the poll as yet. Clip two. Here it is. When you realize that Ken Wilber is a full-blown New Ager, he's a Buddhist, he teaches the lie that we recognize our own godhood, that we are God, through a contemplative prayer. Contemplative prayer. Yeah, I'm just going to say this one point. Contemplative prayer has also entered our denomination. It's true. It I won't say any more on that. For now, yeah. I digress. Let us hear from the horse's mouth. Yeah. Those two clips were people speaking about Ken Wilbur. Mm -hmm. Let the man speak for himself. Let him speak. Mm -hmm. Clip three. We want to anchor mm, big mind in I amness. And because the, each of you now has a sense of simply I am, you are here, and this is I amness. And the simple recognition of I amness is an infallible recognition of ever present awareness and ever present big mind. And if you're aware of your own I amness right now, it's a infallible guide to big mind. And one of the things that's kind of hard is to understand how big mind, I'll give you a little preview right now, but we'll do the exercise on Thursday. One of the things that's a little bit hard to understand is how this fundamental I amness, your fundamental authentic transpersonal self, is not dependent upon objects. Any object you can see is an object. It's not the subject, it's not the pure self. So you want to try to get a sense of I amness stripped of objects and realize that if all objects are gone, there is still I amness. 
Now, usually the way this happens is a difficult process of training where you actually, for two or three years, have to learn to get into meditative states where you suspend all objects, either by concentrative modes or modes of insight awareness that go actually into the unmanifest. So you are in an unmanifest state of vast consciousness with no objects arising, and there's still I amness, radiant, open, empty I amness. So you see the meditation mm -hmm. aspect of promoting spiritualism. Yeah. Let's get John 8. Yeah. John 8. Because yeah. he kept on saying, I amness. Mm -hmm. uh, as you're going to John 8, second point he says, I amness is separate from all objects. Mm -hmm. That's spiritualism. Because yeah. what he's teaching is that the person is, is, is existing and existent mm -hmm. outside of the body. Mm -hmm. You see, the body is objects. Right. Bodies are objects. Mm -hmm. But without the body, there's still I amness. Mm -hmm. And it's an infallible guide. Infa yeah. Oh, right. brother. You right. call that. Yeah. John 8. Yeah. Who has John 8, it? Verse 58. It says, yeah. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Mm. So he's playing off that, actually mm -hmm. saying, just as Jesus could say that mm -hmm. and did say that and experienced that before Abraham was. You're talking approximately 1,500 years, years yeah. prior. Yeah. I am. I was before then, even though you see me today. So what he's saying is we are alive today, but in body form. Mm -hmm. But we were alive before we were born. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I am this, and we are infallible. Mm -hmm. False Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is where it's coming from. Clip yeah. three. Yeah. This new age belief. Here it is. So the, what we're going to do and walk through a little bit on Thursday is, is this kind of exercise, and I'll show you just a little bit of how it works. So you have a sense of I amness right now, and if you think about five minutes ago, listen, what was actually present in your experience five minutes ago that's present now? I amness. There's I amness, wasn't there, five minutes ago. So how about five hours ago? I amness, yeah. But where were the objects five hours ago? Not, not here, none of this. But there was I amness. So what was present five years ago? I amness. It's ever present. No objects at all. If you actually feel that I amness, it's present now. It was present a minute ago. I am this. It was present a minute ago. Five minutes ago, I am this. And the objects are all changed. And that's what's so important. What you are is not an object. And that means any thoughts that you have, that's not what you are. Those are objects. And those change. Were the thoughts you have now the same thoughts you had five minutes ago? No. Did you have I am this? Yes. It's as if you can literally see Satan breathing his miasma upon the crowd. Mm -hmm. This idea of You're I like, amness that we is what is interesting true? What is it, because it's, see this is what happens when you try to be so deep mm -hmm. right, that you literally dig yourself in a pit of error. Mm. Because we know that's unscriptural, unbiblical, no foundation in scripture that we can literally take on the prerogative of God Himself, ever being, present, ever present, omniscience omnipotence that's blasphemy according to scripture mm, yes. correct that we would now take on which alone what gave who gave man the authority to speak like this and it goes right back to isaiah 14 this is the spirit of lucifer so mm -hmm. as we're watching this we're not necessarily shocked it's just we're in awe that man would speak like that have the boldness to speak like this in inspiration we're told that satan doesn't even speak certain things from the pulpit mm -hmm. but man <laughs> <laughs> Pass and fathom. Mercy. Volume 4, 14, 14 and 15. Amen. Yes. Mercy. It's, 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 it's interesting. God formed man yes. from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a, a, living, soul. a living soul. So what two things combined to make us alive? Breath and, and, body. and body. But what is he teaching? That you are alive without the out, body. Without the body. Mercy. Right. You are innately the... A lot. You can. You just. You just were there. I. You, am. you just were there. That's uh, mercy. Mercy. Give it to us. Mercy. Next clip. Mm. We're about to end. So it. interiorly, your body's an object. Your feelings are objects. Your thoughts are objects. You can feel the self-contraction. That's an mm. object. 
What's aware of that? I amness, the pure self. So what was present five years ago? <clears throat> I amness. What was present 50 years ago? Mercy. Yeah, I amness. What was present five centuries ago? What? Show me your original face, the face you had before your parents were born. I am this. No objects at all. That fundamental, ongoing I amness. Stop. Stop. Dangerous. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Now, people may say, that's just one person. Roll the next one. Hmm. So, interiorly, your body's an object. You're Enough. feeling. Next. Everything is going to get better. Ken Wilber writes in A Brief History of Everything, the very book that Rob Bell is encouraging Christians to read about, quote, a cosmic consciousness that is spirit awakened to its own true nature. And he capitalizes spirit there because he's talking about, you know, we would reference the spirit with a capital S because he's the Holy Spirit, but he's speaking of the spirit of God as he understands it. But he's saying that as we travel through this cosmic evolution from matter to spirit, we become aware of our own uh, spirit, that we are spirit, and that's our nature, capital S, that we are God. And he made no bones about, you know, that we are becoming gods. And that's what Rob Bell is pushing on his followers in Velvet Elvis. Your body's an object, your so, feelings are objects. So Rob Bell is mm -hmm. pushing this. Mm -hmm. Look at Rob Bell and Oprah mm -hmm. Winfrey now. Yes. Re so, funny release enough, that. someone mentioned Oprah actually earlier on in the comments. In the about, comments? In the comments Oprah? earlier on, yeah. yeah. Here it is. She's yeah. a well-known New Age spiritualist. And yeah. how much influence does Ni she have on not only this generation, but, but past previous. generations? Yeah. 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 National, global, mm. global. She's been on TV for years. The world global. needs, finish that sentence, the world needs all of us to wake up. I believe that we're going to be fine. I really do. Heaven is? Here and now and then and there and at hand and among us and upon us. Well, what? And available and real. You think you, you also, you know, my definition of God is the all. The yeah. all in the all. Hmm. Through the all, above That's the all, one, in the, the all. <laughs> and then you on page 18 basically say the same thing. I understand God to be, the, these are your words, the energy the glue, the force, the life, the power, the source of all we know to be, the depth, the fullness, vitality of life from the highest of the highs to the lowest of the lows and everything in between. <laughs> I think that's the all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's yeah. God. Exactly. Yeah. So, so we're seeing it covers all the mm. spheres of society. Wow. Yeah. Let's end the poll Let's go. and get the results here. All right, friends, we're going to end the poll here. Because, I mean, think about it. Who is God? God is in us. God is everything. Mm. Pantheism yes. and pan. God yeah. is not only in everything, but God is also in, in, you, us. in, us. in us. Pantheism. And notice, where's heaven? Yeah, it's, it's here, here there, everywhere. Now, it's wherever you want it to in be. In us, among us. Which, which makes sense to them because if you're God, you're also aware of your, your you have the self-awareness that you are God here five minutes ago, 50 years ago. Five centuries so, so. ago. <laughs> so how influential is Oprah and Rob Bell and Ken Wilber and so on? Yeah. Brian very, McLaren. Very and, influential. But those are the people we have to go and, bring and witness That's and right. evangelize. That's right. Yeah. And you're talking about preparing. Let's prepare for heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What heaven? And they mm -hmm. cover all spheres of society. Oprah, TV, talk show, she Rob Bell, she has her own Christian network. influencers, yeah. uh, Wilbur, yeah. whoever his audience are with, you know, spiritualist and... I mean, he's, again, the forefather... Book of Clarence, of the Breakfast of Club. Age. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 all spheres this era is, has permeated. Yeah, you can see that Satan is working overtime. Look at it. Let's look at the, um, the, the results. results from the actual... Poll here again. The question was, What does the phrase ye are gods mean that is written in Psalm 82, verse 6 and John 10, verse 34? 53% uh, answered, See that gods means you belong to God. Friends, that answer, drum roll, is incorrect. Friends, that answer is incorrect. It does not mean you belong to God. Based on the context of Psalm 82 and John 10, the actual correct answer is is D, which was 20%, 20? gods, mm. judges, and prophets. That's what 
God's means in the context of John 10 and Psalm 82, verse 6. God's prophets, his judges, his rulers. I want to get into that. 20%. Yes, 20%. 20%. 20%. Okay. Well, friends, we got some studying to do. Amen? Yes, exactly. That's what we're about make to do. Make it plain. Make it plain. We're about mm-hmm. to make it plain, friends. Make it plain. All now, right. Now, let's go. John let's 10. Go. Yeah. Let's go. We have, so John 10, we want to read Jesus' words here in John 10 and so verse 34. Let's, let's focus now. How should we respond to mm-hmm. those who believe that we are God's born God, we are all divine? Right. All right. Let's read verse 33. It says, the Jews answered him saying, for a good work, we stone thee not. But for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Verse 34. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. Verse 35. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, Thou blasphemeth, because I said, I am the Son of God? Uh-huh. So let's stop right there mm-hmm. and analyze. Yes. yes. Let's begin with, with verse 34. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It, the answer could not be that we belong to God mm-hmm. because the word gods is not with a possessive Pronoun. S. Or, or an apostrophe. Right. Uh, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's not G-O-D apostrophe S, S but G-O-D-S. Uh-huh. Yes. All right? Yep. So it's not possessive. Mm-hmm. That's right. Noun. So Jesus says in John 10, 34... I made this statement where? In your law. In your so law. where should we go? Psalm 82 law. and verse 6. Huh? Or were you, were, you, were you going somewhere else? Yeah, I was going. That's it. All right. Psalm Where's 82 stated? and verse 6. You want to run there, Jared? Let's go. Psalm All right. 82 and verse 6. This is... Christ is quoting in John 10 from Psalm 82 and verse 6, mm-hmm. right? It says here, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. That's right. And if you notice now, how do we know that the word gods in Psalm 82 2 and verse 6 is actually addressing judges and not that we are born divine. Correct. In verse 1, verse 1 it says, capital G, Uh God standeth Uh in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods, lowercase g. Uh Who are these gods? That the creator is judging. Look at verse 2. How long will ye judge unjustly? And accept the persons of the wicked. So who is the ye? How long will you? It's the, the gods. gods. Yeah. Lowercase g. How long will you judge? Mm-hmm. So the gods are judges. That's right. Then verse 3, verse 4, verse 5 mention what judgment they should impart. Yes. What, what, how, how they should not be partial, mm-hmm. but be objective. Objective, correct. Then verse 6 Baptized. now, I have said ye are Gods, Mm -hmm. and all of you are children of the Most High. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 7 now. Mm -hmm. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So the princes are the lowercase gods. Mm -hmm. That's right. Princes Mm -hmm. are like kings. Princes are rulers. Mm -hmm. Any more scriptures to confirm? Yes. Gods are actually judges and rulers and princes. Yes. I want to jump in here as well Mm -hmm. and get this point across here. I did a little bit more digging. When you look at the, going back to John 10 and also Psalm 82, when you look at the word gods in those contexts, I looked up the Hebrews, the Hebrew concordance for that word. It's number 430. Write that down, 430. When you go to that number in the Hebrews concordance, it actually means judges, rulers, and even prophets. And magistrates. And of course, magistrates as well, right? And the term actually is translated to be Elohim. And Elohim is used contextually, uh, you know, most for the most part as God, the God of heaven. Creator. But it's also used in other forms, such mm-hmm. as angels. Mm-hmm. That's Job 2 and verse 1, Job 38 and verse 7. But also it means judges, magistrates, mm-hmm. and rulers. Exactly. And you can see this in Exodus chapter 21 and verse 6. I have a couple of scriptures from Exodus. Let's go there. All right. Exodus so, 21. So, so, so as you're going there, let's just sharpen this point here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the word gods, it's based on the context. Correct. Yes. That is, is it correct. the creator mm-hmm. or is it man, rulers being judges? All right. Magistrates. All right. Go ahead. All right. So based on John 10 and Psalm 86, the context is judges, correct. rulers, magistrates, And prophets. So when you look at Exodus 21, make note of these scriptures, friends. Exodus 21 and verse Mm 6, it says, Then his master shall bring him unto whom? The judges. judges. 
That word judges has the same Hebrew number as in God, as as with God's Elohim. Elohim yeah. in the context. All right. Judges, he saw also bring him to the door. Um, and it goes on. Look at verse now, Exodus 22 mm-hmm. and verse number eight. Mm-hmm. Verse number eight and verse number nine. You have that? Yes. Want to read it? Go ahead. If a man shall deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to keep and it be stolen. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Then verse eight. You could read on verse eight. Mm-hmm. The thief be not found, then the master of the house shall be brought unto the judges mm-hmm. to see whether he hath put his hand onto his neighbor's mm-hmm. goods. All right. And then next verse now. Next verse. Which would be verse 28. Verse 28, yeah. Verse 28 now says, mm-hmm. Thou shalt not revile the, the gods. gods. You see it now? That's it. Nor curse the ruler mm. of, of thy people. people. So revile God. and curse are synonymous. That's right. Gods and rulers are synonymous. synonymous. Mm-hmm. And contextually, yes. it's talking about judges. Judges and rulers right. who have been given authority mm-hmm. by God mm-hmm. to make decisions. Decisions, decisions over the, the people. Right. It's very is, and, and that's Daniel chapter mm-hmm. 2 and verse 21. Correct. Right. That God, he changed the times and the seasons. He sets up kings and rulers. he He sets up rulers and yep. he sets up kings. An example of that is also in Exodus chapter 7 and verse 1, where God gave his word to Moses yeah. and to Aaron. And he says this, Exodus 7 verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God, lowercase g, to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Mm-hmm. So God made Moses a God, not giving him divine power, but giving him authority to proclaim his word and even to be the ruler and judge of his people Israel. And did not Moses on that same point, just continuing, did not Moses pronounce judgment mm. on Pharaoh he did. as a mouthpiece from God? Oh God. Ten judgments. That's right. Right. Let's yep. add to that. Do you know in a earthly court, especially in England, and even even England, Jamaica, and so on and so forth. When you go to the courts, many times the defendant, the prosecutor, the attorneys would say, your honor, mm-hmm. your honor, right. a right. form of respect. Mm-hmm. They also say, my Lord, my Lord, correct. My Lord. Yes. Lord also represents, not capital L, no, Lord, but lowercase Lord L, L yeah. a form of Respect, Respect, number one, mm-hmm. but you are a magistrate. That's right. You have the final say and ruling on this particular case. Judgment. That's God's right. point to rulers. That's right. Magistrates. I mean, I mean, it was God who set up the civil government anyways, mm-hmm. right? So when we when we naturally go into, I love that application, when we naturally go into a court, we don't call the judge by his first name. We say your honor, Correct. your judge, right? Yeah. Because we're, we, we understand he's in a position of power, a position of, of authority. And it was God who set up the government. Correct. And mm-hmm. that's how God's government of heaven runs as well. He didn't make us, you know, uh, for lack of better terms, you know, I lost my point. Okay. <laughs> so here we go back to Solomon. <laughs> that's okay. Point. Princes. I lost my point. Princes were also. Yeah. Princes were also gods. Yeah. In yeah. the sense of judges. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The first one we see is King Solomon. Mm-hmm. When those two. Yeah. The two, the two, the two, yeah, two women came to him. He was able to make a decision whose child it was mm-hmm. and whose it was not. That's, That's right. right. I, was, I, I was going to Psalm chapter 8 and then, and then Hebrews chapter 2 where the Bible says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, the son of man that thou visit him? Thou hast made him a little lower oh, than the mean. angel. So I was trying to link that mm-hmm. those scriptures back to the point showing that God uh, created us to, to, of course, you know, not have Godship with him, but we've been created a little bit lower than that. Mm-hmm. But he has still given us authority to conduct and govern society. Find that verse in Hebrews too. All right. Because earlier we played a video clip where one of the false prophets, false preachers said yeah. that God was not creating man per se. Yes. To be a child of God. Yeah. To be yeah. a ch- okay. But yes. he was creating God. Right. God. Yeah, he, God he was not Adam, God, on the same level. God was not creating anybody lower than him. Exactly. Right. right. That's he was creating him he, himself. Yes. So yes. Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2. So let's go back now to John 10. Yes. So we focus on God's meaning judges, mm-hmm. but the answer on the poll question was judges and prophets. prophets. Yes. prophets. Let's confirm the prophets part now. John mm-hmm. Let's go. John 10. Let's go back there. Look at 34 and 35. Correct. Mm-hmm. It says, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? 
I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods, here's the key phrase, unto whom the word of God came uh-huh. and the scripture cannot be broken. And of course it con- continues. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unto Unter- whom the word of God uh, came. came. That's you know right. what? Uh, let's put the next poll question. All right. Let's while roll. we dig into this. All right. Dig into that. Uh, as I you, want, the other one. you were looking for Hebrews 2, Hebrews right? Hebrews 2 and verse 7. Okay. Hebrews 2 and verse 7. Yes. Hebrews 2 and verse 7. That we, man, mm-hmm. man, Adam and Adam descendants were That's made right. a little lower mm-hmm. than the angels. That's right. And the angels were created lower mm-hmm. than the creator. Exactly. All right. Let's get back here now. Exactly. So it says uh, that the gods mm-hmm. in John 10 were actually people to whom the word of God came. Right. Key phrase, to whom the word of God came, mm-hmm. these are gods. Mm-hmm. So now we must find in the Bible, Examples. who are these people that the word of God came to them? Mm. Who, what are they called? Yes. Are you ready, preacher? Yes. Uh, I, there is one who's very clear. This is in 1 Samuel, um, as I'm looking here for the verse. But to Samuel, mm-hmm. uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, and the verse is here. Uh, I'm, as I'm looking for the verse, but we know the account of Samuel where Samuel is a child. He's in the temple with Eli, and the word of God comes to him. Is see, that verse 11? Verse 11, let's see. Yes. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. So, so, so Samuel was a prophet because yes. to him the word of God came. came. Uh-huh. But Samuel was also a God, lowercase mm-hmm. g, because to him the word of God came. Yes. And he was also a judge over the people. He so he, he held a dual office. Even a he triple. Was a pro- yeah, maybe, maybe even triple. triple. Yeah. He, he held a few offices. Yeah, he was he a did. prophet. He was also a judge. And a priest. And a, a priest. Because yep. he offered the sacrifices. Uh-huh. There it is. And we also have Second Samuel 7 uh-huh. and verse 4. Nathan, yes. to whom the word, word of, of God, God came. came. Mm-hmm. First Kings 17 and verse 2. Elijah, uh-huh. to him the word of God came. Yes. First Kings 18 and verse 1, to him the word of God came. Mm. Uh-huh. Let's continue, then we get the poll. Jeremiah, yes. in Jeremiah 1, mm-hmm. verse 11 to verse 13, to him the word of God came. came. Yeah. Isaiah, in Second Kings 20 and verse 4, to him the word of God came. And we know these names very well. These are individuals who wrote books of the Bible, these are prophets. Yes. So these individuals, God calls them gods with the lowercase g, not innately having a divine nature, but again, being rulers, being judges, having headship over and authority over things of earth. All right. All Paul. right. Let's, put, let's drop the poll in the, in the um, chat right here, friends. Okay. Based on the context of what we're speaking about. Who was one of the judges in Israel in the Old Testament? Who was one of the judges? You know what? I should have rephrased that. We should have and asked the question, who was one of the gods? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Gods. Yeah, that's true. Judges, go yeah. ahead. All right. But since we've already confirmed that gods means judges in this context, Let's go. then it, it works either we, we, way. We have friend. to help them out a little bit. Yeah. Understand. Yeah. 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 All right, friends. So you can, you can put that in there. Options. Who was one of the judges, gods in there? So the options are A, Othniel, B, Abner. C, Joab, and E, Lamech. All right, so you have your four options there. Choose in the chat. I'm already choosing. In, the, right, poll, in, the, in poll. the poll. I'm already seeing confliction going on, but prayerfully, we'll have a majority. Mm-hmm. All right, friends, who was one of the judges in Israel in the Old Testament? So let's, let's come back to that. So here we are looking at the actual scripture now. Uh-huh. So let's go to Isaiah 41. Let's give them a chance to answer in the poll. Mm-hmm. Right. The poll question, Isaiah 41 and verse 22. Okay. And then we're going to confirm that with Isaiah 46. Uh-huh. And what is the point that we're making? The point we're making is this, that the Bible calls God's lowercase g prophets, uh-huh. those who can declare the end from the, from the beginning, beginning in a secondary sense. Yeah. They can foretell mm-hmm. future events. Prophets. That's right. Isaiah 41. Who has that? Mm-hmm. All right. What is what verse 22? Verse yes, verse 22 and 23. It says, Let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things what they be, that we may consider them and know the latter end of them, or declare us things for to come. So show, declare us things to come, right? To come. All right. Notice now in verse 23, show the things that are to come hereafter. That's prophecy. That we may know that ye are mm. gods. gods. 
Mm. And the context is profits. That yes. is profits. Yes. Yea, do good or do evil that we may be dismayed and behold it together. So we write, so you see it right there that profits in the context is likened to gods who know the end from the beginning in uh, a secondary sense. Secondary sense. Secondary sense. Right, because right. I was going to correct myself too. Right. So let's not emphasize that portion. Secondary sense. Right. Go to Isaiah 46 now. So right. how can the lowercase gods, the prophets, declare future events? Mm -hmm. Because they're receiving it from whom? From God. From God. From the God. creator, the word. God of heaven. Come That's on, right. preacher. Isaiah 46. 46. Mm -hmm. Let's and look at verse 9, 9 and verse 10, 10. One of the creator's primary attributes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. It says, remembering the former things of old. Mm -hmm. For I am God and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Didn't that brother in the video say that he created Adam just like himself? Mm. So yeah. that, that's contrary to scripture then, mm -hmm. right? Blasphemy. We want Bible for our feet, yes. not man's opinions. And the scripture that confirms that what these men and women are teaching is blasphemy is John 10. Yeah. Verse John, 30 same. through verse 33, go <laughs> ahead. No, no, I'm saying that's the same, that's the same scripture that we're quoting from here. John Correct. 10, right? Correct. It says what now? All right, let's go there. All right. John you 10. being a man, make, make it yourself thyself God. God. That yep. is blasphemy. That's, yes. yep. That's what they charged Jesus for, but they were wrong in that because Correct. he was God. Yeah. Amen. His, his claim to Messiahship and Godship. And he is God. He's, He's God. still alive. Amen. And that's what the same issue is in John 10, 34, is he claimed to be the son of God. And that's in, why they were so upset. Correct. Yes. Now, let's take a look now at the warning. What is the biblical warning? What is the judgment, the catastrophe that will fall upon individuals who are humans yet claiming to be god and claiming to be divine mm. remember i told you we'll oh, come, back come back to back lucifer to yes, oh, yes yes right lucifer's lucifer's desire was to be what to be like god to have worship to receive worship mm. and what happened and what would be his end he was kicked out of he heaven and what awaits him is fire and brimstone that's isaiah chapter 14, 14 amen verse, verse 12 through verse, verse 15 mm -hmm. god is going to place him in hell that'll, that'll be brought H -E -L -L, brought down, down to, to hell. hell isaiah chapter 12 14 14 sorry there's 14 verses 12 through verse 15 and verse 15 says yet thou shalt be brought down to hell uh to the sides of the pit now now is there in the bible where every single hebrew was a god lowercase g now Every single because, Hebrew. Because gods, well, that's mm -hmm. where gods were actually judges. Mm -hmm. Gods were actually prophets. Mm -hmm. Right. Not in, in the Bible, are, were every no. and each Hebrew no. a god? No. God specifically chose that's them. The point we're making here. God chose them. That's it. Right. So even though men and women were gods in the Bible, prophets and judges, mm -hmm. does it make sense now? Not each. Not every Hebrew was right. a god, right. a prophet, mm -hmm. also a judge. Right. So That's in the true. last days, mm -hmm. in the last days, mm -hmm. not every person is a judge. god, That's right. a judge mm -hmm. or prophet. Does it make sense now? It makes sense. A true prophet, a true judge. Right. So when they walk around, you remember a breakfast club, yeah. what did he say? James Samuel. In, in, the, in the movie, what did he say? He's, Everybody was what? He was a god. You're a god. Doesn't matter your religion, what you believe. There's a God in you. It doesn't matter if you have faith or not. Yes. God's in you. Imagine that. And we couldn't tell who was a God in the movie because what? We're all God. We're all God. God. Yeah. That's not biblical. So yeah. even the correct understanding of God's lowercase g, it cannot be applied to every Everyone. person. Right. Mm. It makes sense why Christ had a, had a cameo in that movie because he wasn't special. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in that film was a God. So, so there it is, friends. Don't say... Peace to the gods as a greeting, right? Don't say exactly. that. Foolishness. To your friends or whoever else. No. Exactly. Yeah, we pray that those scriptures were, were pointed and were mm -hmm. clear in the study as well. Hopefully you were making notes. I'm not finished yet. Do you remember Herod? Mm -hmm. Herod in the Bible, was Herod a god? Yes. yes. Self. self because Herod was a judge. Mm -hmm. yes. But not a judge placed there by God, god because yes, Herod was an apostate. That's mm -hmm. the point. Uh, do you remember in Luke 23? Mm -hmm. When Pilate sent Christ. Mm -hmm. Captured, bound yeah. yes. with the soldiers to Herod, mm -hmm. Luke 23, verse 7. Because I knew that Christ came from Herod's jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Verse 14 and verse 15, when they brought Christ mm -hmm. back to Pilate, he said to them, I found no fault in Jesus. Mm -hmm. I sent him to Herod and Herod found no fault in him. That means Herod was a what? Judge. 
a judge or, or God. a god but not from god of no, course no of course not yeah the yeah. creator yeah. but now in acts chapter acts chapter 12 yes Herod, yeah. yes you said yes go ahead no well, i was going to finish it no i mean <laughs> finish. acts chapter 12 I verse mean, 21 to 23 herod, go ahead now herod came out they had a big celebration he came out and the people said in royal, in royal apparel, royal apparel. Yes. and the people said this must be a god mm, and he took the praise and he received that worship yes yes, yes sir and God struck him down immediately. The Bible mm. says worms ate him up instantly. Mm. That's it. So, so if, God, if God had made him a God, then why would there be destruction fall upon a God? They were thinking he was a God in the divine. That's that? it. Because ah. he was already a God. Yes. Yeah. In the divine sense. As a, as a judge, a magistrate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they were hailing him as divine. 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 And when he accepted that, Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen to all these men in the hip hop world, Hollywood, if they don't music and publishing and authors? Wow. If, if, if not, we have covered and more. If they don't repent. If, if they don't repent. Now, let's take that and apply to the Garden of Eden. Let's mm -hmm. come back there now. All right. Was Adam a god? Adam, Adam was a little was, god in that yes. sense of... He was given dominion. dominion. That Genesis chapter yeah. 1 and verse 28. Yep. God gave him dominion. 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 So he was already a god, a god in a lowercase g. Yes. Right. Finish it now, brother. But he wasn't divine as in he was the creator himself who could create as that, um, that self-proclaimed prophet, that ambassador, ambassador guy, yeah, yeah. in so Africa now, stating. So, so now when Satan in chapter 3 now said to Eve... You shall become as gods. What was the distinction mm. now? Because Adam was already a okay. god, lowercase g, mm -hmm. having dominion right. on the earth. Satan, the was, Satan said you would, be, you would be just like the creator. Divine. Right. Divine. Right. divine. And, that's what, and that's what sets Correct. apart God from the right. rest of the false gods, is Correct. that God of heaven can create. Yes. Right. But Satan, what he's doing is counterfeiting that. Correct. And, and what Satan wants to do is he wants us to believe the lie that we can be divine, because he knows that once we imbibe that lie, once we drink it, we're going to fall just like he fell. And then we're going to receive the same punishment that he will receive. That's right. And misery loves company. You know that, right? So Satan knows what he's doing is, is not truth. That's it. But he says, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going to be destroyed by myself. I'm mm -hmm. going to take as many as I can with me. And this is a humongous monumental movement mm. globally. This new age ideology that we can become god mithraism interesting let's, very very amen good. let's end the poll and then we will bring this to a close here end all the right poll, so again the question was who was one of the judges in israel in the old testament all right let me populate that who was one of the judges of israel in the old testament so we have 40 percent of you chose a othniel that's Did great. they get it right? They got it right. They got it right. And Amen. of course, you had time, open book test to search your Bible. Of course, of course. <laughs> so. Of course, in the courts, friends, when we're brought, we won't have much time mm -hmm. to search. And so that's why these, these studies, these conversations um, are so very important that we can prepare ourselves spiritually for those tests, right? You know, I have two points here from the book Great Controversy, which is going to sum up what we just covered here. In GC... Page 553, the chapter entitled, Can Our Dead Speak to Us? Mm -hmm. It says how Satan applies spiritualism in different forms. Mm. To those who are debased, then spiritualism is tailored for that class. It could be the witchcraft, the black, uh, black the science, and so on. Right. But for yeah. others, the persons of culture, and refinement mm. he presents spiritualism mm -hmm. in a more refined and intellectual way and thus succeeds in drawing many into his sneer mm -hmm. last statement on page 554 it says that spiritualism teaches that man is the creature of progression mm. that it is his destiny from his birth to progress even to eternity toward the godhead and again, each mind will judge itself mm. and not another. The judgment will be right because it is the judgment of self. Right. The throne is within you. Mm. Kingship is within you. God, God is within you. Oh, yeah. Said a spiritualistic teacher as a spiritual consciousness 
a walk within him. Last point. My fellow men, all of us were on unf unfallen mm -hmm. demigods. Mm. And another declares any just, any just and perfect being is Christ, is mm. a Messiah. Wow. Any one of us mm. is a Messiah. Book of mm. Clarence claiming to be the Messiah, wanting to be like the Messiah, mm -hmm. but not succeeding. Yeah. Any one of us. Mm -hmm. So, and again, that's the love of money. Yeah, the root right. of all evil. That's right. right. And if you notice, when people say, I am a God, divine, what they're actually saying is, there's no judgment. Mm -hmm. If you are God, who's going to judge you? That's right. No and, one. You and also, you I can judged. save myself. Exactly. I can yeah. save myself. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. uh, I have that infallible guide that's, within me, as he, Wilbur that's, said. That's what he said. Yeah. There's no sin. There's, there's no sin. If you are infallible, you, you have mm -hmm. not sinned, and you were never seen. Right, right. So here, here we are talking about the everlasting gospel of chapter 14 of Revelation, verse 6 and verse 7, the hour of his judgment, judgment is coming. They're like, judgment? <laughs> there is no judgment. I'm, no, I'm no a judgment. God. I'm a judge. Yeah, I'm my own judge. Exactly. Right. And it leads the spiral effect of what you believe is your truth, my truth, because... It's relativism. R relativism. And, and pluralism. pluralism. Wow. Yes, and yes. pluralism. <laughs> Oh boy! Anything else? I mean, I mean, hey. happy Sabbath! Happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. Thank you so much for watching this podcast. This was really packed, and I know that you all were blessed. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it and love it. And since it's trending, yes, for the world, not yeah. for us, but yeah. for the world, it's trending. Mm -hmm. Book of Clarence, yes, mm -hmm. came out today, today. right? Today. So now we're asking, safe to serve local and international and first time viewers. Let's use this as a call to action. Mm -hmm. yes. Take this video now and share it. Disseminate it. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. If you've shared it, share it again. If you shared it again, share it another time. <laughs> if you've shared it another time, go to another platform <laughs> and share it on that one. That's right, friends. We have to get the gospel out. That's right. Calling people out of darkness. Amen. Important. Amen. Thank you so much for watching, for listening. Please share the program. Comment down below. Please, we want to hear from you. And we will see you on the next episode. God bless. We love you all.